In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may the grace and peace of God our Father, and our risen Lord Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Amen. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers in Christ, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to His Word and celebrating His mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to Him and all ages. To Him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. And by His holy and glorious wounds, May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen.
and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. than the world's creation in the beginning, 
except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff, and with your hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. A column of cloud also leaving the front took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud Upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot, he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. <laughs> from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there until they have watered the earth making it fertile and fruitful giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth my word shall not return to me void but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 
and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation.
Thanks, Thanks Steve. Really good.
one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. <coughs> For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The gods were shaken with fear of him, and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you all see him. Behold, I have told you. <clears throat> then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful, yet overjoyed, and ran to announce to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached and embraced his feet and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Does any of this make sense to you? Really? I mean, we're, we're pretty smart people. We've been around the block a few times. Whether it be formal education or the classroom of life or just the wisdom of the years. Does this make any sense? What we're celebrating tonight? Our world is so filled with darkness. The darkness of sin, war, crime, violence, abuse. The darkness of tragedies that change people's lives. The darkness of the pandemic that we are in that's changed our lives for now. And, and the greatest darkness, the darkness of death. And what we proclaim tonight is that Jesus came and through his resurrection dispelled the darkness of this world. Does that make sense to you? It's what we believe. It's what we bring to the world, the hope of the light of Christ. And each of us are called to bear that light to a darkened world, and whether it makes sense to us or not, with the absolute conviction that the light of Christ is more powerful than any force in this world, including death, including death. It doesn't seem to make sense, but it's what we believe. We heard today Beautiful stories from the Hebrew scriptures written thousands of years ago and they have great messages. God created the world and he saw that it was good and most importantly he created us. He looked on man and woman and he saw that it was good. 
Do we still believe that? Does God still see it that way in us? Absolutely. We retold the story in the book of Exodus, how God saved his people from slavery. They passed over from slavery to freedom, through water nonetheless. Is that just a nice story of ancient times? Or do we believe that God continues to lead his people, to lead us from the slavery of sin to the freedom of the children of God through water, nonetheless? <laughs> we heard the prophet Isaiah said, Come to the water, come and receive my precious gifts without money. Without money, they are a free gift given to all who would receive them, appreciate them, and use them. Do we hear the Lord today for no other reason than His great love for us, saying to us, come to the water? And the prophet Baruch talks about prudence, wisdom, yeah, we're smart, sort of. Went to school, maybe some people have a degree, letters after their names, or whatever. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the truth that Christ brought us, the truth of his word. He's talking about the things that matter to God and thinking the way God thinks, that's real prudence. Not how intelligent we are, how smart we are. <clears throat> it's how much we value the things that matter to God. That one of those readings were written thousands of years ago. But Jesus said when he came, I have come not to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. And although heaven and earth will pass away and things change, we know that. My word, my word will never pass away. Hold on to that message. It's as true now as it was when it was first written and proclaimed to people thousands of years ago. The world is good, and more importantly, you are good. God saves us through the waters of baptism. He invites us to share in his gifts for free. He calls us to be people committed to the truth, to real wisdom and prudence. Tonight is noticeably different than any other Easter vigil I have ever celebrated in my life. Because our elect and candidates are not here tonight to share in the waters of baptism, to renew their own baptism and to be confirmed in the Holy Spirit. And we miss them greatly. Their names are inscribed before us in the book of the elect, and their spirits are etched in our hearts as we are joined with them in faith longing for that day, and that day will come when we do welcome them into the full communion of the church. But we say that doesn't make sense. They're supposed to be here tonight. That's what this vigil is all about. And I don't pretend to always understand or to ever understand how God thinks or why things happen the way they do. But as we normally celebrate the Easter Vigil, it is the elect who make their baptismal promises first. And then those already baptized and all of us renew ours. Perhaps this year, this extraordinary year, 
God is reminding those of us who are baptized that it's the way we live out those promises that ultimately shapes the lives who will make promises soon and into the future. Because all of us who have had the privilege of working with our elect and our candidates know how much their faith enriches us. And so my dear elect and candidates, please know that our hearts are with you and we continue with you to long for that day when we will celebrate with you that new life of initiation in the church. It may not make sense to any of us tonight, but in God's way, we will see the good that comes from this extraordinary time. And whether it be tonight or any time we gather at the table of the Lord, does it make sense to you that we could bring such simple, ordinary gifts of bread and wine? And as we pray over them and call upon the Holy Spirit upon them, that they become for us the true and living presence of the risen Lord. Not a reminder, not a symbol. It's really Christ, the risen Lord. This is a symbol. This is Christ. Doesn't make sense, but we believe. And perhaps what makes the least amount of sense to us tonight is that our church is empty. It's Easter. It's just us in the chapel tonight, and you're not here with us. That is so hard. It doesn't make sense. My heart is breaking. But I don't think it made sense for Mary Magdalene and the other Mary who ran to the tomb. And it was empty. It was empty. But Christ was alive. And they experienced him. And his last words were to them were, Go now and tell the world that I am alive. This building, this church may be empty temporarily and for now, but never forget that you are the church, we are the church, we are the ones called to go out to our world to bring the light of Christ amidst darkness, to announce to them the good news of God's word to share with them those life-giving waters that redeem us and invite us to full life and to help proclaim to the world that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He is alive and he calls us to be his witnesses. From a logical, rational point of view, it may not make perfect sense but we're called to be people of faith, people who trust our God and who proclaim with all of our lives that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He is alive. We responded tonight, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. And so it's not that we always understand but it is that we believe Christ is risen. My sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ.
Tonight we recall in our second reading that when we accepted baptism, we died and rose with Christ. St. Paul tells us, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into his death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. That life has already begun. To know Christ Jesus and to follow the gospel is to live with the freedom of the children of God. Let us then, together with all our sisters and brothers all over the world who are gathered in prayer this night, renew the promises we made by accepting baptism in the name of Jesus. And so I ask all of you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty shows? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I, I do. do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and life everlasting? I, I do. do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia. With our baptismal faith strengthened and renewed, we feast with joy as we offer our prayers. For the Church, that in celebrating the Paschal mystery of Jesus' death and resurrection, it might be, might be strengthened and purified to spread Christ's light in word and deed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of government, may they seek unity over division, hope over fear, and life over death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected candidates, as they wait patiently in prayer to be initiated into this holy church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, the lonely, and forgotten, especially those suffering from the coronavirus, that they may feel the joy of this holy night through our prayers and loving support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, celebrating with us in prayer at a distance, that our hunger for the Eucharist will grow deeper and deeper. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are desperately seeking resurrection, may they find during this Easter season hope to persevere, continuing their journey from death to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose journey in life has ended, including John Khalil. May their faith in the eternal life offered through Jesus be fulfilled. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, in Christ's death and resurrection, we are made new and become partakers in everlasting life. Hear the prayers that in keeping this Easter feast, we might be renewed in the life of discipleship. We ask this through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
sacrificial offerings that what has what was what has begun in the paschal mysteries made by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord amen, amen. the Lord be with you and, and with your, your spirit. spirit lift up your hearts we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord and let us give thanks to the Lord our God it, it is, is right and just, just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all, to laud you ever more graciously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter onto my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, I speak on behalf of our entire pastoral staff and very personally in wishing you a most blessed Easter. I know that this will perhaps be the most extraordinary Easter any of us have ever, ever celebrated. And perhaps we will experience God in most extraordinary ways, and that certainly is my prayer for all of us today. Although we are physically at a distance, we are united in faith and love, because we are one, one body in Christ. And so let us continue to walk together in the newness of life of the risen Lord, bringing that good news to our world and to our elected candidates who continue walking with you, longing with you, and looking forward to that day when through the waters of baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit, you become fully united with us as the church. So have a wonderful Easter. May the Lord bless you in every way and keep you always in his loving care. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.